Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. Today it's demo time and uh, to show you how to install this. So uh, I've been rambling a lot about a project called Hack CMS and as the description says, the smallest CMS backend possible to power hacks. So that's the scope of the whole thing. Um, hacks, uh, hackstheweb.org is a front end thing so it's just sitting there um, but you, you clearly need to wire it up to something. So we've been putting in place, you know, Drupal integrations, uh, backdrop, uh, grab CMS, all these things. Um, but it'd be great to have a really, really fast way to get up and going, building out sites with this. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea with this, is uh, something to, to manage those, those little sites. So uh, I'm gonna, from the directions, we're gonna git clone this project. And I've got it in place, and then I can go CD hack CMS. I'm actually gonna pull open a window. Um, to hack CMS, and you can see what the file structure of this looks like a bit. Let me open it in the window. Here we go. Okay, so uh, what you're going to get, you're going to see these few things. So um, you can see it obviously it has a bunch of web components. Um, those will be cleaned up in the future as it's still heavily in development. Uh, but the idea with the structure is that really it's only about these two folders. So the rest of this system. Um, you know, takes care of every everything else, right? So I go into system, you can see some PHP things, you can see some libraries, right, that we've abstracted away from this uh, in order to bootstrap hacks. The idea is just to get hacks up and going really fast. What hack CMS is gonna is actually doing is it's more or less just managing um, some JSON files uh, using a, um, a format we call JSON outline schema. Uh, and so, then all it does is copy static websites. So it's like a static website factory, sort of in the way that like a, a Jekyll is, uh, except not. So it's literally copying and pasting the files. Um, and then you're gonna be able to use hacks to just author flat files. Um, so you can see we have boilerplate and a site and then boilerplate page, which if I open up a boilerplate page, um, actually, you know, let me open the whole project here in, um, in VS Code, give you an idea. Okay, there we go. Much better. So we've got this over here, and so really all it's doing um, is it's going in. We go to System Boilerplate. We're going to copy this, and so you can see your your content of your CMS, if you will, is uh, it's just going to be basic flat files, um, and then your site. And this I, I need to document this quite a bit more, but um, the idea is that your site, if it could just load uh, an element, um, and you know, like in this case, it's outline player, which is the thing that delivers our little mini sites, um, that you can just, if you can read hacks JSON schema um, and include this one reference, uh, that should be about all you need. And it's a little weird, but you know, we'll have to document it a bit. But we, we really want these to be more or less static uh, designs that kind of come to life with hack CMS. So shut up, Brian, just make it, make it do the thing. So, um, okay, so I cloned it. Uh, I'm using a project called DDEV. You can read more about it in there, but DDEV is a local development thing. It's pretty stinking awesome. And we've got um, more or less uh, just get it up and going support. Exited state already exists for hack CMS. So was, ah, I see, so I already made a container for that. Um, so I need to go ddev and remove maybe. Okay, it's been removed. There we go. Still a little bit new to me. There we go. All right, I already had a project that was working on a different directory with that name. So I did ddev remove, got rid of that old one, ddev start. Um, it's going to fire up Docker effectively, and then it's going to run through. We've even got a little automated installer. How about that? Um, I did that with the hacks thing, not them. <laughs> so, so what that does is it basically runs through um, and then just taps this file, which makes sure some permissions are correct, um, generates some UUIDs and kicks out that wonderful little ASCII art. Uh, but the primary thing it does, as you can see my modified files here from version control, is it modifies config.php. And again, because this is local development, it overwrites what this is for its defaults. Uh, and sets it to admin admin. So it's got an incredibly 
simplistic password system right now um, by design. Um, if you need to tweak where it's loading from, you know, if it's in a subdomain or in a, d a directory, you can do that. Um, the default just kicks out there. It generates a private key from, you know, a random hash, and it creates a salt with another random hash so that we can at least do some, um, you know, so, some decent trapping on things. Um, the other thing it does is it uh, just makes this, you know, this sites PHP, or sorry, sites.json file. Um, and you can see in our sites.json file, this is JSON outline schema. I've got site list, BTO Pro, all my mini sites, and it just says like add, it has nothing in here. It's kind of the idea. Okay, so we're all ready to go. We've got this message, hey, you can contribute to the project. Copy this address, throw it in there. And this is the first thing you'll see. Now I'm gonna log out because I shouldn't have, I was logged in, I cheated from, from doing this earlier. But so the first thing you'll see is basically nothing, <laughs> okay? Um, and if I pull this out, you see there's you know, nothing in there. So to get this party started, you hit the power button. And now I've already logged in with a session token on the background there. Um, but if you haven't, so let me open up uh, Safari here, if I can type correctly. Okay, Safari, and we'll go to this address just to show what that would have looked like. And I'm gonna hit that. Okay, so you get this little basic prompt, and I'll do admin, admin, and I'm logged in, woohoo. Um, then I can click and I can get started. So I'm not gonna do it in Safari, I don't like using Safari. So uh, here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a site. And my new site, I'll call bto.pro. Row and a new uh, microsite um, banner. You know that's not implemented yet. Uh, color, you can pick a color for it. Again, this is like really early. Um, we'll just say orange uh, theme. Right now, the only one is default. Icon is only for this overview board, but just to give you an idea of some things. And then let's hit let's go. So when I hit let's go, um, it created a site. It claims now. Let's see what that means. So. Um, this becomes important for understanding what our little mental model is here. So it went into uh, config and then it edited this sites.json file. So now you can see I've got my new record for bto.pro. I've got all those settings in there and it's in this very, very minute, you know, minute format here. So um, then under underscore sites, you can see it made a bto.pro directory matching site name here. If I go to bto.pro, you can see that it has a sim link over to web components. Um, it's also got an index.html uh, that it made, which is literally just a copy of the one I showed you before. It's got a files directory, which has nothing in it. It's got item with a, a big old hash value. We'll look at that in a second. In there is my great new content, so very little in there. And then it has a site.json for it which has the details of this microsite, um, but in a form that's a standalone. So um, these, the idea with this is these sites can be broken off and run into perpetuity without a system, right? Think of it as a, an HTML you know, creation factory, basically. Um, and also that the format itself is so minor that if you wanna break away from what we've done, you should be able to import your stuff pretty easily into something else. Um, I got sick of systems taking control of my ability to, you know, communicate myself on the web, whether that's, you know, WordPress or Drupal or anything. I was just completely tied to needing to constantly upgrade something um, when really I just want to be able to express myself and have it be in a format that works anywhere forever. Um, so, okay, so this is what I get when I uh, open this up. Got my little mini site. See, it says bto.pro up there. There's great new content, and I've got... Um, this little edit button here. And so if I hit the edit button, there is some state management goofiness. I'm not gonna act like there aren't bugs in this. Uh, it's just really far along now. Okay, um, so I can add another page, um, more here. And for each one of these that I'm adding, this is gonna correspond to a uh, site record. And so if I go back to here, we can see that, that another page and more here are creating additional pages in our site.json file. 
then those associated uh, UUID hash values are creating a folder that just has index.html in it. And so this is just a flat HTML file that you can load off of there, okay? And that other one's empty because I hit save before. But so if I hit more here, I can open up hacks. I'm going to make a uh, Wikipedia article about Polymer, add some headings and a placeholder, and I'm gonna hit save. And now that more here, there we go. This is what's getting saved to that file, right? So extremely minimal, uh, minimalist. Um, and that's saved to that file. Then if I click on here, there's the page loading and I've got my material. So uh, you can also, um, you can interface with the file system, kind of a big deal. So let's say I made a placeholder and we change this over to an image, sure. Uh, or I had a layout, layouts are in here, and I threw down four column layout, or I had a template, throws down an ex example lesson. Um, as you know me from my other videos, I try to uh, accelerate things pretty quickly so that you get confused about just how much is going on here, or is possible in a little bit of time. So that file, I'm gonna put it up there via drag and drop, that just uploaded, quote unquote. Um, it's quote unquote, because really it's just placing a file in a directory. I mean, it is uploading it, but uh, so now that's on the file system. It gets a little trippy because, you know, file system in this case is uh, via Docker, it's shared right here with my normal file system. Um, let's throw that in as a QR code, why not? All right, just to prove we can. All right, take that QR code, convert gizmo. So every function that, you know, I've ever shown of the way these things work previously, they work in here. Um, don't like that one, convert gizmo. Let's send it over to meme because I love my stupid memes. Okay. So we can do all the functions that we've always been able to do with hacks. Move that stuff around, drop it over into this other column, whatever. Um, take the layout of this, drop it down to three columns. There we go. Okay. Uh, I can update the other pages in this outline. And let's take out that fodder content, save. And now I've got my stuff there uh, with most with those media pieces. And what that did is it dropped those files into their associated files directory. Um, so, uh, you know, and this is another kind of goal of platform, although it doesn't work flawlessly at the moment, I could click my microsite, I wanna be able to hit download and get the whole thing as a zip file. And so this is a zip downloaded of that entire site that if you, um, I need to rewrite this index.html, but if it pointed to you know, web components in the correct directory, this would just work anywhere. Uh, so it doesn't need hacks in order to run. And you might go, okay, well, that seems a little odd because I just saw hacks in there. What the heck is going on with that? And I, I totally agree with you. This is one of the weirder paradigm, <laughs> paradigms that I've, that I've put in place um, for anything ever. Uh, so, you know, you're making changes, you've got this authoring thing. Um, you say, how, do, how did the authoring thing get there, right? Anyone can just do this. Well, let's fire open a incognito window and prove that's not the case. And so we'll throw that address in there. And in an incognito window, hey, there's all that content, but I have no authoring interface. I, I can't get to this to modify it in any way. Uh, so how do we do that? Well. There is some serious trickery going on with this little button uh, related to uh, JSON Web Tokens or JWTs for short. And so whenever you log in, you know, by clicking login, you're actually storing in your local storage bin on your account, your, your browsing session here, um, a token. And that token gets checked for. So if I go back to my little mini site, now that that token isn't there, it goes away. Um, now the token still has to validate that, you know, I'm me, you can't just generate a JWT that doesn't match anything. So there is some of that security in place. But the, the interesting thing um, uh, with this, with that exact, uh, that content, right, is if you look in the, here we go. So if we look in here, um, an outline player, and if you would look through outline player, there's, there's no reference to hacks necessarily, um, except for one function that's just like, Call me if I, you know, call me if someone needs me, sort of a thing. Um, 
the, the real magic happens in this dynamically generated web component uh, that's hack CMS site editor.php. And so what we're going for here is basically, you know, the theming constraint in hacks will be if you name, um, if you name a couple things correctly, um, then uh, you'll be able to have hacks injected into your theme. Um, so you won't really need to account for hacks a whole lot. You won't need to integrate with it. Um, so looking at what that what that looks like right now, it's not fully documented yet. But um, if I search for hacks in here, there's basically a function that's hacks CMS refresh, which is um, to tie it tie it back to uh, where is that hacks CMS refresh? Yeah, okay. So it, this function needs to be there so that the uh, hacks player, you know, whatever that other component, can kind of call on this component. Hey. Uh, you might want to refresh yourself. Now that's just if it wants to, right? So I knew that that stuff saved correctly because it's actually updating the manifest and that shows up here. That's what this manifest.generate request is. Uh, telling this, hey, we updated, go go update these things. Um, the, you know, if, if I search for the word hacks, it only shows up five times here, one of which is a type check. But effectively what's happening is um, it's checking for a global when this element gets added to the page. And it's saying, hey, um, if there's a JWT, and I, I'm going to try and abstract this even. I don't even want to do that. Um, but it's saying, if there's a JWT, which there is a, um, a JWT login element. So right now, you have to implement this JWT login element, which is basically just copy and paste it. But um, if there's a JWT at the you know token we're looking at, the address we're looking for, then um, I need you to tell hacks to exist and I need you to tell it to replace my content area or to inject sorry into my content container so if you look at the way it's set up uh, slot is that content coming in from the outside right so when I click to one of these that's loading an HTML file and then it's putting its contents right here um, what we're doing with hacks then is this this implementation of hacks is more or less attacking the theme and the theme is indicating to hacks hey, uh, you can edit me. And when you need to edit me stylistically, you need to place yourself right there. And so actually, sorry, it's right there. And so just through some extremely simple state uh, management type of stuff with that, uh, I believe it's slot, there it is. Um, we can say, well, is this being edited? If it's being edited, then we need to hide the content that's on the page. And then hacks will take over the rest. And so that whole, the whole hacks content authoring experience as made visible in here boils down to this button, which the button is not dictated by the theme, right? It, the theme is basically saying, hey, I, I figured out for you that you can edit me with hacks. And I actually would abstract even more of that. So there's even less logic in the theme. Um, and then this is actually a duplicate of the content that's seen on the page. So if I reload the page, um, this content is duplicated. So right there, when I hit the button, it's duplicated. It's just switching between two editions of the content, basically. So that then when I delete this, message goes out the door um, to, to, uh, to the back end to save that page. But then a message goes back to the theme to say, hey, you should repull your information. And so there's a minor state management issue there where it's not actually clicking this page. Um, but um, that's that's what's going on there. So we should be able to theme this with more or less anything, um, you know, so long as it's component driven, pretty quickly. Uh, we could do the same for the outline portion. I don't know. I would probably make that optional. Um, and the, the outline does support nested structures. It's just there's again some minor state management issues where it's then not saving it or not. It's saving it and rendering it correctly, but it's not allowing me to edit it after the fact, you see they go away if I go to edit it after the fact. So I was able to throw this up on a web server um, and I, I did some trickery with it. And by that I mean I put in a sim link just to get a cleaner path um, and put it, up on, put it up on the web. So this is one of those little micro sites um, that you know, technically could be just broken off and run as its own thing. Um, and so that's kind of the idea is we've got this little 
microsite factory, in effect, um, that people can build out whatever they want from it very, very quickly and keep it forever. Um, that's kind of kind of the idea we're going for here. That you know, a handful of clicks, and I've built uh, a mini site that presents me on the internet, and I really don't need to know a whole lot beyond uh, beyond that, right? So, um, thanks for checking us out. You can see, there's I think a cache issue there with DDEV. I won't say it's perfect. Uh, we definitely still need some work. Um, there's also uh, support for some of the deeper functionality of hacks. You can see that in here with the like, hey, put in your API key. Um, so it is reading off of this configuration. So like if I supply my API key for a configuration, I go back to my little bto.pro site to edit it. And I want to find stuff on YouTube. Now I can search YouTube because that's in place. And so, yeah, that's kind of bringing the world of hacks into a static desktop, you know, not static desktop, but a, an incredibly simple uh, site factory type of, of methodology. So just one more way to get hacks out there uh, to the masses. We're looking at using this um, as kind of like a content, a rapid content prototyping, um, as well as a student kind of portfolio engine, right? So if we trim down the options available to hacks and students only have, you know, a couple of these buttons really, or um, we, we rename the buttons, Instead so of templates, you know, it's like, you know, sample artwork or whatever. Um, all of the different ideas are in place in hacks that more or less replace the ideas that could exist in anything at that point. And so we want to be able to start leveraging this to let people build and express themselves rapidly or as rapidly as possible, I should say.